Hey everybody, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and today let's talk a bit about tracing paper. So what is tracing paper anyway? Tracing paper is a thin, lightweight, and translucent drawing paper that is usually designed for drawing and sketching. It is particularly useful for design work and is best paired with graphite, charcoal, or other dry media, and not so much with, like, inks or markers. So when many of us are kids, we probably use tracing paper to, as the name suggests, trace. You grab maybe one of your favorite graphic novels, and you're just tracing over the character, and then you maybe color it in. And it's a really kind of fun way to sort of get yourself into the idea of creating something unique and creating art as a whole. However, the problem is, is eventually you kind of reach a point where like, okay, this is cheating. I shouldn't be tracing other people's work. I should just be designing my own work. And then your tracing paper usually just kind of gets thrown to the side. But there actually are a number of artistic ways to use tracing paper, and those are what we're going to be talking about, talking about today. The first method is what I've come to call iterative design. For an iterative design, what you may want to do is, rather than color over a sketch and possibly ruin it because you don't know what it's going to look like after you color it. You can trace that image and then go back on top of the tracing with color to see how you like it. While tracing your drawing and preserving the underlying lines and forms, you can also sort of change things along the way. Maybe like, oh, I didn't want that line there. Or, oh, that was too dark. Well, that's the point of tracing paper is you can kind of change that again without damaging the drawing underneath. Or for someone like me and sketch in pen, you can't damage the drawing underneath. You can't even change the drawing underneath. In this example, I'm actually tracing over a drawing that I did in my sketchbook, which was a study of a digital piece, and, that, and then I'm uh, just kind of figuring out those lines, changing a couple things, and then adding a little bit of color and colored pencil on top of that. For more on iterative design, check out my Sketch Every Day tutorial up in the corner here, where I kind of go into this idea of doing it all on one page in your sketchbook, just changing things little bits at a time, but doing sketches over and over and over again. Building off of that concept, we also have the ability to layer design elements. So we were already doing this a little bit at first by layering perhaps color on top of uh, ink or graphite, but what if we want to layer a lot of things together, like six, seven, eight, or more pieces of uh, tracing paper just to kind of like build the design up a little bit over time. Well, that's actually a very useful method in using tracing paper. In this example, I'm sketching out just sort of a simple box and then adding different layers and layers on top of that, building a sort of unique faux landscapey thing. If my example isn't quite enough for you to wrap your head around, if you've ever seen the first Iron Man movie, think about when he's in the cave designing the uh, armor and he looks and puts the, all these pieces of paper down, they're like, what is it? And he flattens it out and goes, take a look. And it's just like, boom, there's the suit. But it's all layered in different increments. That's the concept of layering design. Much like iterative design, layering your design allows you to make little changes to perhaps like an arm section of a suit without having to change the entire suit itself. While layering design may not be super useful for designing a sort of concept landscape, it can be very useful if you're into sort of prop and costume design in particular because you can again change little bits, uh, make infinite variations without really damaging the concept as a whole. Okay, so let's back step a little bit and go to sort of that initial thing, that childhood idea of just tracing something. Well, why would you want to do that as a more advanced uh, hobbyist or professional artist? Well, the good idea in doing that, uh, with tracing paper, is that it's a great way to isolate and understand line work as a teaching tool. Before the onset of programs like Photoshop, people actually had to sort of trace their design elements by hand rather than just using a magic wand tool. For this example, I took uh, Mark Crowley's Brody's Ghost graphic novel and traced over the font uh, of the title. From there, I ended up uh, sort of trying to re-sketch some of the letters freehand just to try and teach myself this idea of this different type of font and exactly what makes the lines the way that they do. Being able to trace over specific areas will allow you to uh, ignore things like unnecessary details or color and just pick out the lines that you want. But again, this sort of process of tracing over an image or isolating stuff out has in a lot of ways been replaced a lot by the digital medium. 
Now, not everybody has access to Photoshop or GIMP or just a computer where they can do that kind of stuff with a lot. A lot of times, some of you watching, you might be younger. You don't necessarily have all these tools at your disposal. Tracing paper, though, it's cheap, and you can definitely pick some up or just use some copy paper in, in place of tracing paper. It's a little more opaque, but you know what I'm talking about. And trace over something to isolate something out the way you would digitally, but doing it traditionally. Okay, so the final method for tracing paper we're talking about today kind of combines a lot of these elements together, and that's using tracing paper in mixed media applications. Because tracing paper is so thin and light, you can easily take an X-Acto knife and cut fine, thin details out of the paper. You could use glue or acrylic gels sort of as an adhesion medium. However, it should be noted that if you are going to be gluing something to a canvas or board, one thing to definitely make note is if you drew something on top of that, hit it with a coat of top coat or sealer. That way, you, when you glue it, it doesn't just like smear onto your page, unless that's what you want. Another great application for tracing paper is to use the tracing method we talked about uh, just previously, but then using that as a flexible template and taking it to something sculptural, something like three-dimensional bottles, boxes made out of clay that you can then cut and work with into your sculpted surface. Okay, so these are just a couple of techniques that allow you to start using tracing paper, perhaps in a more effective manner. Be sure not to just focus on one technique over the other. Mix and match them depending on what kind of project you're doing. But I gotta ask in general, has this video changed your perception of what tracing paper is, how it can be used, and how you might use it in a future project? Remember that tracing paper isn't just a copying medium. It's a tool used for a lot of different kind of stuff. If you're less of a landscaper or sort of more traditional artist and you do a lot more design work, Tracing paper might be a good thing for you to pick up if you don't already have some. And as always, if you learned anything in this video, hit the like button, get subscribed if you're not already, and this has been Cinderblock Studios. See you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for checking this video out and sticking around to the post screen. Uh, stuff to check out this week, I'm actually going to be streaming, hopefully, I'm not scheduled yet, but monthly, uh, over on Twitch. I did something Saturday, I think it was, and uh, really had fun there. It's a sort of great community that's, in terms of uh, the art community there, it's really kind of starting to grow a little bit, and it's really pretty good. So I'm probably going to start streaming over there on a more regular basis. So be sure to check out uh, the recent stream, where I also have time codes in the description box, as always, to help you guys out uh, watching that, because it's like a three-hour video. Uh, additionally, I've got uh, another artist interview set up for about three weeks from now or so, uh, so that's going to be a really good one, so be sure to stick around for that. As always, uh, Check out stuff on the channel because I'm always coming up with some really crazy stuff for you guys. So, see ya. Have a great week.